Hey everyone, Cap from TCG Break here, bringing you the fourth installment of my deck building series. For this episode, we have some great additions to the deck, which primarily aim to make our deck more consistent when we go into our synchro plays. So with that being said, without further ado, let's get into it. I'll start with the main deck lineup, as this really only has one minor change. I'm still playing the three Revealer of the Ice Barrier, three Speaker for the Ice Barriers, two General Wayne of the Ice Barrier, and as for the tuners, I'm still playing the two Hexa Spirit of the Ice Barrier, the one Defender of the Ice Barrier, one Fishborg Launcher, and the only addition to the main deck this week, I'm playing one Crystron Citri. As of the time of this recording, Crystron Citri is currently at an assessed market value of $8.75 per copy. Most of the time you will special summon this off of your Crystron Halki Fibrax. Citri has the effect during your opponent's main phase or battle phase, where you can target one non-tuner monster in your graveyard and special summon it. And if you do, you're able to immediately synchro summon one machine type synchro monster using Citri and that special summon monster. Citri is a great form of interruption during your opponent's turn, and certainly helps to get into your synchro plays using a few new additions in the extra deck. I'm still playing the frog package in the form of three swap frog, one dupe frog, and one ronin totem. And as for the remaining one ofs, I'm still playing the one white stingray, one prior of the ice barrier, one zoogen, one warlock, and the one mulling glacia. The spell lineup is fairly similar to the previous weeks, with three Freezing Chains of the Ice Barrier, three Medallion of the Ice Barrier, and I have cut Winds over the Ice Barrier to two. This is so that I can fit Crystron Citri while still having a 40 card deck. Most of the time you don't want to see multiple copies of Winds in your hand, and it's very prone to being hit with Ash Blossom, which depending on the number of monsters you tribute from your field, could leave you with little to no resources on your field to continue your plays. And to round it out with the trap lineup, I'm playing two Paleozoic Canadia, two Paleozoic Dinomiscus, two Paleozoic Olenoides, and three Crackdown. Moving on to the extra deck, there are no major changes to the Link Monster lineup. I'm still playing the one Crystron Hockey Fibrax, the one Marincess Coral Anemone, and the one Boral Sword Dragon. As for the Xyz lineup, I'm still playing the one Totally Awesome, one Abyss Dweller, and one Bahamut Shark. And on to the Synchro Monsters, we have a new addition in the form of Crystron Quandax. This is currently at an assessed market price of $2 per copy. Quandax has the effect during your opponent's main phase or battle phase, where you can quick effect Synchro Summon one Synchro Monster, using Quandax and any other monster you may control as synchro material. Also, if Quandax is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target a Crystron monster in your graveyard and special summon it. I'm still playing the one Herald of the Arc Light, the one Desert Locusts, as well as the one Dulorin. I'm also playing the one Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite. This is an excellent monster to have in the extra deck, as the quick effect speller trap card negate is useful against pretty much any matchup. And to round out the further additions to the extra deck, I'm playing the one Crystron Phoenix and the one Crystron Quirio Gandrax. At the time of recording, Crystron Phoenix is currently at an assessed market value of $9 per copy. And Quirio Gandrax is currently at an assessed market price of $10 per copy. Phoenix has the effect where if it's synchro summoned, you can banish all spell and trap cards your opponent controls and in their graveyard. Also, if Phoenix would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one other monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Inquiry on Gandrax has the effect where if it's synchro summoned, you can target monsters your opponent controls and or in their graveyard up to the number of synchro materials used for the synchro summon of Query of Gandrax and banish them. Also, if it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one banished monster and special summon it to your field. And to round it out for the extra deck, of course I'm still playing the one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier and one Trishula Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier. The side deck for this week is exactly the same as the two previous weeks. 
with three a pointer of the red lotus, three heavy storm duster, three ice spawn, three fiendish chain, and three mind drain. Now onto the duels for this week. For the first match, I'm up against Salamangrate. I opt to go first, but don't start with the best hand. They normal summon Lady Debug, but I take control of it with Crackdown. I tribute summon for General Wayne, but it's hit with Solemn Strike. They normal summon Foxy, but I hit it with yet another Crackdown. I add Revealer off of Medallion. Special summon the Frost Spirit. And then go into Crystron Hockey Fibrax. I link into the Coral Anemone. Special summon Zuigen. Attack for a bit of damage. And then pass turn. I use the effect of Hockey Fibrax to bring out Desert Locusts. And then quick effect Synchro Summon into Dragite. However, on their turn, they're able to special summon the Parallel Exceed and get into the Baguska, which effectively shuts down my Spell and Trap Negate with Dragite. On the following turn, they are able to Link Climb into Access Code Talker, which pretty much seals the duel from there. For the second game, I'm able to get into the Coral Anemone, as well as Special Summon the Molin Glacia to discard two cards from their hand. They're able to get into the Salamangrate Bay Links. However, I activate Crackdown to take control of it. On the following turn, I'm able to get into Bahamut Shark, specialing the Totally Awesome, and putting enough damage on board to end the game. For game 3, they opt to go first. They start with some fairly standard Salamangrate plays. And end on Sunlight Wolf with a set Solemn Strike. I don't have very many plays, so I simply set 1 and set 2 back row. They are able to get into the Heat Leo. And then Link Climb fairly easily into the Access Code Talker, which destroys my entire board. I don't really have any follow up plays. So they are able to take the match with access code on the following turn. Now moving on to the second match, I'm up against Shadal Dogmatica. I don't start with the best of hands, so I set four and pass. They start with a Shadal fusion, special summoning the Apcolone, though I take control of it with Crackdown, which pretty much forces them to pass turn from there. They add Schism to hand off of Hedgehog's effect, and then Special Summon the Flirtily, though I activate Dynamiscus to banish it on Summon. Through the use of my Paleozoic Trap cards, I am able to gain quite a lot of advantage, which allows me to get into a Totally Awesome. Standby, I Special Summon Dupe. Link off for the Marincess Coral Anemone. Add Toad back to the extra deck, and then special summon Ronin from the graveyard.
to overlay for Toad once again. I negate the effect of Squamata with Toad, and then set it to my field. Attacking over Aerial, they activate its effect, and special summon a Dragon face down. And then on the following turn, I'm able to flip summon the Squamata, though they are able to destroy my Crackdown, which allows them to regain control of the App Cologne. Activate Medallion, adding Wayne, and then add another Medallion to add Speaker. I special summon the Speaker, and then overlay for Bahamut Shark, special summoning our Toad, and then going into the Boral Sword. Attacking over App Cologne with Boral Sword, then Toad, and then Boral Sword once again to end the duel. Onto the second game of the match. They opt to go first, and set two back row and one monster face down. I start with the normal summon of the Frost Spirit, activating Speaker's effect, which is hit with a Solemn Strike. I then special summon the General Wayne, activating its effect to add the Freezing Chains to my hand. The Frost Spirit sends Warlock, then I banish the Speaker to get a token, Synchro Summon into Dragite. I then link into Crystron Hockey Fibrax, special summoning the Fishborg Launcher. I attack over Wendy, which sets a Shadal Dragon, and pass turn. On the following turn, they flip summon the dragon, targeting my dragite to shuffle it back to the deck. They attempt to attack over my Halky Fibrax, and I use its quick effect to special summon Desert Locusts, which unfortunately they discard Ariel, which then banishes three of my cards in the graveyard. On the following turn, I'm able to get into a Toad, attacking over their Squamata and negating its effect with Toad, then setting it to my field, and attacking over the Shadal Dragon as well. They simply set one card on their following turn and pass, they activate Sinister Shadow Games, sending Wendy to set Beast. But on the following turn, I just have too much board presence overall. I'm able to Link Summon into Boral Sword and attack for game. On to the third and final match. I'm going up against Burning Abyss. I go first Normal Summoning the Revealer, and then Special Summoning White Stingray. They hit the Revealer with an Infinite Impermanence. So I just overlay for the Bahamut Shark and then Special Summon Toad. They start with a normal summon of Tour Guide and activate its effect, which I negate with Toad and set it to my field. However, they are able to extend into Dante and later overlay for a Beatrice and set one card. On the following turn, I'm able to normal summon the Swap Frog, sending Ronin, and then I can bounce Swap back to my hand, special summoning it by discarding the Fishborg Launcher, special summoning the Hockey Fibrax, special summoning the Frost Spirit, going into Coral Anemone. In standby, I activate Toad's effect, special summoning the Dupe Frog. They attempt to activate the effect of Beatrice, which I negate with Toad, and then set it to my field. On the following turn, they're able to normal summon Tour Guide, Using Halky Fibrax's effect, I special summon Desert Locusts, forcing them to discard one card. They're able to extend into yet another Dante, as well as Link Climb into an IP Mascarena, and set two back row. They are able to banish my Ronin Toten and Dupe Frog through the use of Ice Dragon's Prison, and shuffle back their own Beatrice with Nightmare Unicorn. So I enter battle phase, Attack over Unicorn with Bahamut Shark, and poke in for a little bit of damage with Marinsa's Coral Anemone. I continue controlling the game, however at this point they've pretty much run out of resources. In the following turn, I have enough damage on board to end the duel. Now moving on to the second duel for the match. They go first, setting three back row and one monster in past turn. I normal summon Revealer, which they hit with an infinite impermanence. I use Winds over the Ice Barrier to special summon yet another Revealer, but they yet again hit the second Revealer with an infinite impermanence. So I simply overlay for Bahamut Shark and then special summon the Toad. On the following turn, they try to special summon Skarm, which I negate with Toad and set it to my field, as I don't want them to get into the Dante, then shuffling back the Toad, they simply set one and pass. I am able to normal summon Revealer, which special summons Defender, linking into Halky Fibrax, which special summons Citri. I attack for a little bit more damage and pass turn. They don't really have any resources, so they set one and pass, 
On the following turn, I'm able to Synchro into Crystron Quandax. I set one and attack with both of my Crystron monsters. On the following turn, they try to Imperm the Halki Fibrax, though I chain its effect to Special Summon Desert Locusts which discards Graph. They're able to special summon Skarm, though I'm able to banish it on summon with Dinomiscus, which pretty much seals the match from there. As shown in the match replays, the deck performed rather well with its new additions to the main and extra deck, and certainly proved to be quite capable in its ability to combo off through its synchro plays, while also controlling the game through the use of our trap card lineup, and totally awesome. So with that being said, that's all I have for this episode. As always, if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more like it, feel free to give us a like and subscribe. Feel free to leave any suggestions regarding changes you would make to the deck in the comments below. And as always, until the next one, have a nice day.